Hello, in today's video, now that we've got our printer all prepped and ready to push some plastic, we're going to get things heated up and start printing with ABS. So now that you've seen what not to do, let's go through some tips and tricks to make sure your printer is printing ABS plastic successfully into the best of its ability. Now the first thing I'm going to touch back on again is make sure you start off with some good filament. There is plenty of cheap ABS plastic out there. It stinks, it has poor layer adhesion, and it warps like crazy. So make sure that you start with some good filament. Now depending on where you are in the world, sourcing is going to be different of course talk with local printer groups, get advice from others in your area, but make sure you start with a good brand. KVP, Prusament, Hatchbox, Paramount, eSun, they're all good brands. Just make sure you start with some high quality filament. Now the filament that we're gonna be using today is eSun ABS Plus. It's a very beginner friendly ABS. It is a blend, it's not a pure ABS, but it is close enough to pure ABS that in most use cases, it isn't gonna make much of a difference. It is very resistant to warping and prints very well even in a basic enclosure or even open air with the right settings. Now before we go into slicer settings, there are some firmware settings we are going to have to tweak with our printer before we move on to pushing some ABS plastic. Now anytime you start printing with a different type of plastic, in this case ABS, you are going to have to adjust a few things. The first thing is you may have to do a PID tune at your new temperature depending on your printer. If you are planning on printing a lot of ABS plastic, for example, I recommend you redo your PID tune at around 240 degrees Celsius with a 100 degree bed. Now, of course, you are also going to have to make sure your extruder as well is also calibrated correctly for E-steps because that plays into effect when it comes to flow calculations and feed rate. And with ABS, you need to make sure those are as accurate as you can make it. And also, any printer firmware specific settings you may want to tune first, such as pressure advance, linear advance, or even input shaper with clipper. You are going to want to go ahead and tune those settings before you start printing to ensure the best quality of your prints. Now there are guides out there for going through and tuning each one of those. So I'll leave you to your own devices to do that. I won't be going over that in this video right now. Now the first few things you are going to be changing when printing ABS versus PLA for example, and the profile I'm using to begin with is a PLA profile, is temperatures. Now when it comes to temperatures, I do recommend doing a temperature tower before printing. And this is ensuring that your filament is being printed at the correct temperature. So after doing that, you can adjust your temperatures accordingly. Now one trick I like to do is print the first layer a little bit warmer than subsequent layers. This helps a lot with bed adhesion. And you can do the same thing with your bed. Now I find most ABSs like a bed temperature of anywhere from 95 to 110 degrees Celsius. You'll have to adjust based on how the plastic is sticking to your bed and your bed material accordingly. Now when it comes to flow rate, you are gonna have to adjust this if you've never printed ABS before. It has a different density than other plastics and it contracts when cooling at a different rate than other plastics. So you are gonna have to do a flow test to make sure that your flow rate is adjusted accordingly before moving on. Now, when it comes to print speeds, ABS can be printed at relatively quick speeds, quicker than PET, for example. But what I do recommend is printing that first layer, especially if you're new to printing ABS, slow. So I recommend anywhere from 20 to 30 millimeters a second to start off. If you find out you're having issues, drop it down. If you're printing fine, it's okay to speed it up a little bit, adjust accordingly. Now, retractions, again, ABS filament is gonna flow different than most other plastics that you've printed. So of course you are gonna to have to do a retraction test. Using your base PLA, for example, retraction settings are a good starting point usually, but you may have to adjust either lengthening it or shortening it to get the best results. This is again, something you'll have to do. Now cooling, this is one of the biggest difference with 
ABS versus PLA, for example, and ABS requires minimal to no cooling to print successfully. In fact, if you have your cooling too high, you're gonna have warping. So what I recommend, especially for those that have never printed ABS before, is turn your cooling off. This will ensure you have the least amount of moving air and you have the most successful chance of an unwarped print. Now, it is possible to run cooling fans with ABS. For example, on my enclosed Voron V2s, I do run a part fan anywhere from 10 to 20%. However, they are fully enclosed with ambient air temperatures near the bed for most things I print of around 50 degrees Celsius. Now, a very minimal fan fully enclosed with high ambient temps can help a lot with overhangs and bridges, especially for print quality on finer details with ABS. However, if you've never printed ABS before, you're unsure how your printer is gonna behave when printing it, especially with the filament you're using, I recommend starting with no part fan enabled. Now, when it comes to bed adhesion, this is really gonna depend on your bed surface, your printer setup, and if it's enclosed or not. Fully enclosed with relatively high ambient temperatures, for example, I don't run any additional bed adhesion, I just print the parts as is. However, if you're unsure on how it's going to print in your printer, or if you're having issues with parts warping, you can always turn the brim on. Now, there's no shame in using a brim, especially with ABS. This can help a lot with parts sticking down. Now, it's better to have a little bit of brim to clean up after your print's done versus prints failing six, seven hours in because parts started popping off the bed and the whole plate is ruined. So if you're unsure, start with using a brim and adjust accordingly from there if you really need it long-term or not. And lastly, for major settings that can help with printing ABS in your slicer is a draft shield. And this can be used to keep the heat in and prevent drafts as you're printing. Now, draft shields are really only beneficial when you're printing open air. So if you're unable to enclose your printer for whatever reason, you can print with the draft shield. And this does lead to more successful prints when printing ABS unenclosed. Now, you're not gonna get the same level of layer adhesion with higher ambient temps as a fully enclosed printer, but for smaller parts, especially if you don't have time to enclose your printer or you're unable to enclose your printer, this can help give you successful ABS prints, at least to get you going. So I did go through and do some various test prints. Now the test print that I used is the Mobius 3 base. That is a very good test print in my opinion for checking to see how your printer handles printing ABS. It's a relatively long print. It's about two hours on most printers. It has areas prone to warping, on the little flanges where it attaches to your printer, for example. It is tall and has overhang. So you can get a good idea of how well your printer is handling ABS by printing this test piece at the recommended settings. Now I did print it with several different slicer options enabled, uh, no brim with brim, draft shield enabled and enclosed. And as you saw in the beginning of the video there, I also printed it with some really bad ABS that I've had kicking around for three years and that is the cheapest stuff I could buy at the time, so please don't buy the cheapest ABS for a reason. Now all these prints again are in eSun ABS Plus. Now the first piece I printed was unenclosed in a room with the doors closed with no brim or draft shield. Now this print printed quite well actually. Um, eSun ABS Plus again is cheating when it comes to ABS, so as long as you really don't have any drafts and you have good first layer adhesion, odds are you'll probably have a successful print. However, with it being unenclosed, it is subject to room temperature ambient temps, especially on a printer with a moving bed that's constantly moving around. So while it printed successfully, layer adhesion, especially where the tabs meet the body, was quite poor and they snapped off relatively easy with basic force of bending it by hand. Yes, I know it's not a scientific test. You'll just have to believe me that this one broke quite easily. Now, the next one I printed was the same model, same slicer settings, only I've added a brim and a draft shield. Now with the brim and draft shield, it successfully held to the bed and the draft shield allowed it to have slightly better layer adhesion because it kept more heat next to the print itself. Now it still broke easier than the fully enclosed print, however it didn't break as easy as the unenclosed one. And lastly, I put the cardboard box enclosure on the printer and printed one with just a brim. Now this one had the strongest layer adhesion and giving it the same amount of force that broke the other two, it's still holding together. It also printed the cleanest in my opinion in terms of appearance. And it also printed the cleanest in my opinion in terms of appearance. Now, when it comes to a brim, removing a brim is relatively easy. Um, 
simply fold it back on itself and you can usually peel it off. If not, get yourself a deburring tool or even an X-Acto knife and you can usually trim it off quite easily, especially with ABS, it usually breaks right off. Now, if you go back to looking at these prints, you can see that they were printed quite close to the bed. You can even see some of the telltale white stress marks of ABS when it was popped off the bed. Now, these come off really easily if you just hit it with a heat gun for a few seconds. They're just stress marks. But as you can see, this print was printed relatively smushed into the bed. Now, with ABS, it does like a little bit of smush, unlike PET, for example, where you kind of have to lay it onto the bed. So don't be afraid to smush it into your bed a little bit more than you're used to if you're having layer adhesion issues. So dropping your nozzle offset and giving it a little bit more smush when you're printing can help a lot, especially if you're having issues with first layer adhesion on some bed surfaces. Now be aware, don't push it down too far. You don't want to dig your nozzle into the bed or permanently impart ABS into your bed surface. So what I would recommend is as the first layer is going down, just adjust with baby stepping if you need to, to give it a little bit more smush. And that's one of the things that harkens back to one of the most important things with ABS printing, and that is your first layer. Your first layer is super important with ABS because if it doesn't go down well, it's either too high, too low, your bed's uneven, not flat, you didn't run your ABL, you're going to have unsuccessful prints and sometimes you won't even know till hours in. So make sure your bed is as level as you can make it. If your printer has some form of automatic bed leveling, make sure that's enabled. Run some test prints. Make sure wherever you print on your bed to the best of your ability is as level and flat as possible because you don't want to lose prints 10 hours in because they suddenly started popping off because your first layer wasn't that good. So I hope you found the video informative. As always, if you do have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. If I do another video on printing ABS, it's gonna be based around the questions you have. So if you still have any questions when it comes to printing ABS, make sure you let me know so I can help you in the next video. If you would like to see more content such as this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring that bell so you can stay notified. As always, I do stream on most weekends. So if you wanna follow along with any of my printer builds or current projects, make sure you tune in there. If you'd like to support the channel in any way, there are options below, either affiliates or supporting me directly through Patreon. So if you do wish to help out, it's greatly appreciated and I thank anyone who helps with that. As always, be safe out there, wash your hands, and have a nice day. Thank you.